I think that they ask a series of questions that are all related to this same function, okay? And it's a bit weird because you're we're sort of quite comfortable, most people are, with dealing with what happens when you just slap absolute value standards around a number, that's all okay. And then when it gets to the functions, you're like, what the heck is that supposed to mean, okay? So rewind a little bit. You'll see me doing this quite often because um, it's the best place to go to, to wrap your head around like all the concepts related to absolute value, which is what is the definition of absolute value? Uh, there are a few definitions. But the, the most helpful one is always this one. And if you haven't got it, maybe you want to jot it down. Russell, you should definitely have this in like your first page. Absolute value of A is shorthand for two different things. Sometimes the absolute value of A is just A, provided A is positive. Okay, so the absolute value of 5 is just 5. The absolute value of 87 is just 87. But if A is not positive, if it's negative, then we slap another negative sign on it and that cancels out. So the absolute value of negative 5 is negative of negative 5. And that's what turns it into positive 5. Okay? Now, this works for numbers. Well, this is the definition for numbers. And it's the same deal with functions. Okay? So when you come and have a look at this, I can say this absolute value of x, I can replace that either with x or with negative x dependent on where x is or what its value is, okay? So I can replace that. This guy down here, he doesn't care about this up and down thing. He's always the same thing. So when I write this and say, okay, it's gonna be this or this. The first case is this, if x is positive. So I've literally just replaced this with this, just like I have here. Or alternatively, it's gonna be this, if x is negative. Now, I will just point out, uh, there's a big problem with this, particularly for this example here, which is that if x is equal to zero, the whole thing explodes, yeah. right? Because you kind of like, uh, do you guys know, by the way, like why is it that we say, the technical word is undefined, why is it that we say you can't divide by zero? Do you guys know why? Because <laughs> it, just, it just doesn't make sense. I'll, I'll tell you why, because like multiplying by zero is fine. Adding zero is fine. Subtracting zero is fine. What's the problem with division? Um, division is what we call an inverse function. So we understand what division is based on what multiplication is. So for example, we can say six divided by two is three, right? But the reason we can say that is because six is equal to three times two. Like that's actually where it comes from, right? Now, therefore, you can see the problem with if you're dividing by zero. So suppose you have some number, um, like say five, and you divide it by zero, okay? And you're like, I don't know what that's equal to. I wonder what it should be, what value I should assign to it. Well, let's just call that value x. I don't know what it is. But if you apply the same logic that division has to get its meaning from multiplication, then if you multiply both sides by zero, it's just nothing. then that tells you, yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, well, that should be x times zero, yeah. but no num there's no x that you can put in there that will make that work because anything multiplied by zero, of course, is zero. So that's why you can't actually <coughs> define it. There's no way you can do that. Um, there's no number you can put there that will make sense. So therefore, we say you can't divide by zero. So that's why here, um, if x is positive, things work. If x is negative, things work. But if x is zero, you're stuffed, right? Um, which is why, if I, if I go back to something else that you know, if I ask us to graph this, right? The picture of this, we have a name for this function. What's it called? It starts with an h. It's a hyperbola, right? So roughly yeah, speaking. Much is a zero. Isn't it? Yeah, so this is like the rough shape, okay? Yeah. But we know that it's not that it just keeps on going like that. It actually never gets there. So that's why we draw these dotted lines, these asymptotes, right? So this asymptote here that goes up and down, it's x equals zero. Horizontally, you can't go left, you can't go right. So you can never get there for the same reason that you can't divide by zero. So when you look at this, this can't work at x equals zero. So I can say it's undefined, this is part A, I think. It's undefined at x equals zero, okay? Um, and generally speaking, if you've got anything, uh, any function divided by any other function, right? This whole thing, y equals this, it will be undefined 
wherever that bottom thing is zero, right? So wherever whatever that function is is zero. So let me give you an example. Um, one over uh, x squared minus one. That's going to be undefined at two places because the denominator is zero at two places, namely plus and minus one, right? Uh, how about this? Do you remember the reciprocal functions from last year? Do you remember being introduced to their names? Yeah, so um, with the three reciprocal functions are uh, sec, cosec, and cot. Right? I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before, but there's a really cheap, somewhat coincidental way to remember which one belongs with which. Is it the letter? Yeah, that's right. So if you just write down the three reciprocal functions, there they are. Just have a look at the third letter. That's somewhat coincidental, but it works, so why not? Now, this is therefore cosec x. And it's undefined at an infinite number of places because sine x, like, do you guys remember? This was a while back now. When you met the um, is it sine, cos, and tan functions, they, they wave around like yeah. this. Okay. In fact, that's why sine is called sine. Um, sine comes from the Latin word for like sinus, which is which means curved, and we call it curved because that's the shape of the graph. Now you can see here and here and here and here and here and on for infinity, sine x is going to be equal to zero. Every time sine x is zero, one over sine x is undefined. Okay. So you get this graph with uh, an infinite number of uh, vertical asymptotes on it. Okay. So now when we come back. You have a look at this. It's relatively simple. It's only equal to zero, the denominator that it is. It's only equal to zero once, so that's the only place it's undefined. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 All right, now, once you've established that, the absolute value signs are out of the way, so I can actually do some simplifying here, right? So you can see x over x is just one. And negative x over x is just, yeah, very good. And of course, I'm not including any like equality like that because I've just yeah. explained why. So therefore, I take that out. Now I'm ready to draw the thing. So on a set of axes, yeah, it's a bit strange. <coughs> Let's go from left to right. This is on the left. X is less than zero. So everywhere that X is less than zero, that's all of these parts over here. Mm -hmm. The graph is Y equals negative one. Well, that's just a horizontal line like that. So I'm just going to label that as y equals negative 1. Now what about x equals 0? What's happening there? Nothing. The answer is nothing is happening there. You can't say I'm here or, or there or anywhere. So that's why we put an open circle like that. So we say x equals 0 doesn't have any value. And then you cross over to the right hand side. When x is positive, it's going to be 1. And in exactly the same way, it is undefined there. So there's a hollow circle. And that weird thing is the graph. It's strange, but if you follow through the definition of what an absolute value is, it just kind of falls out, and that's all it can be. All right. So how, how do you feel with that? Is that okay? Yeah, not, yeah, not so far, so good. Okay. So let's have a look at 12, and yeah, it does take off a little bit, okay? So, um, I don't know if you can see that function there. Yeah. So, yeah. so for 11b, it says, um, Use okay. the table, yeah. the, the table values of x. So to, x to draw equals, it. Yeah, yeah, x equals three. You just cancel out and just make a one. Correct. So, so exactly right. So um, I suppose what I've done is I've gone straight to here, right? But if I didn't do this, if I just came back to over here, just right on the yeah. first line, right, and said, okay, uh, x, uh, y, uh, and then I pick some values. I can fit that in. So you can see what's going to happen is, all right, for this, it's going to be the absolute value of negative 3 on 3. Uh, sorry, negative 3. Like that. Yeah, that's the absolute value of x on x, yeah. and that's what x is, right? So that's going to be 3 on negative 3. Well, that's negative, negative 1. Okay, and then here, you're like the absolute value of negative 2 on negative 2. That's 2 on negative 2, which again is negative 1. And you're going to keep on getting negative 1 for any of these values until here, when you're like, sorry, the shop's closed, okay? And then over here you say, um, the absolute value of x on x, yeah. which is 1 over 1, which is 1, and it keeps on going all the way. So generating this table of values is kind of just checking 
have I done the right thing here? Have I simplified this correctly? And it confirms that we did it. Okay.